Hello everyone, welcome back to Aurelia in City Skylines and to the last building episode in the series. That's right, today we will build the last couple of projects and then the city will be completely done. Well anyway, last time we worked on the edges of the upper lake, made some changes to the quay, to some blocks around it, finished the last canal and so on. Today we will build a ferry port for both sightseeing but also for entering the city by ferries from the edge of the map. We will also complete all the high density blocks around the crater area as well as the new ferry port and then we will focus on that artificial island that we built some time ago for the highway to resurface from below the lake. Lots of things in front of us then, so let's start. We're going to start by defining the shape of the ferry port area. It's uh, kind of already defined because we are on the side of the crater and the crater, very old project by the way, it has some interesting geometry and it also has these kinds of roads going uh, from the circles around the crater and the roads are going parallel into this main avenue that's on the waterfront here on the edge of the upper lake. So basically all the blocks that need to be filled today are already defined by these main, slightly main roads, not exactly the avenues, but you know, these kinds of roads that are just forming the interesting geometry. So that's already done. And this place that I'm filling with water over here, that was already like geometrically very clear how it needs to be made. But uh, today we are just going to, you know, complete it, extend it, add some things to it and uh, just make it complete, right? That's the whole point. Anyway, this little rectangle shape in here with, uh, with the water, that's going to be one part of the ferry port area. As you can see, I'm creating this uh, avenue kind of elevated slightly so that these very short uh, ferries can pass underneath it so that this is going to be the short ferry terminal, something like that. It's only going to be for the uh, short range ferries that are just going to be going around the lake into the island city and into that artificial island that we are going to get to in today's episode as well. And uh, the ferry port is also going to have like an outer part, like an outer uh, pier, let's call it, which is, uh, well, at this point it was intended for like big, bigger boats that would not be able to fit under that bridge, but I eventually didn't find any uh, like great looking uh, big ferries, so I'm just going to use pretty much the same uh, style of ferries anyway, but it's just going to be like an interesting extension of the port area, but uh, more on that later, I suppose, because I haven't built it yet in the time lapse. Anyway, also the, uh, the ferry port, the inner ferry port, is going to have a train station, as you can see, there is that curved uh, station track in there which is like a you know end track it's not going to continue any further and yeah by the way yeah this is that outer ferry terminal that I was talking about but at this point I was just defining that that uh, with uh, these uh, buildings now these are I think the uh, the Stockholm ferry terminal buildings I believe and they are very nice looking so uh, it was you know no-brainer that I'm going to use it for uh, this place as well now, speaking of this terminal building, I really wanted to make it a bit more unique. I know it's already kind of unique, but this place needed something uh, with a slightly different footprint because the building is kind of long, but uh, not exactly very wide, and these blocks needed something slightly differently shaped. So I'm going to be using a couple more instances of that terminal building, and also it's very short, so it's not exactly fitting this high density uh, block in here. And on top of it, I'm going to place these very nice looking bluish colored uh, office buildings. Now they actually do have a recolored uh, wall on the side right there, but uh, it's just used for some interesting like color variations, but uh, these kinds of different walls are always blue. So I really like that, it's just bringing like an interesting color into this area. And uh, then I'm just going to use the recoloring on those different walls to just, you know, spice it up, create something more interesting. So this block right on the side of that inner ferry port area, ferry terminal area, that's going to be mostly just procedural objects because I really needed to customize the fit in that place. I do believe that I eventually did place some uh, some of those office blocks in there to actually make it functional and make it a bit alive. And also this building is going to be uh, just uh, connected with uh, all kinds of pedestrian paths into different levels. 
and uh, obviously the ferry port area, the train station, and even through the through the buildings, so that people can just uh, walk around the streets and uh, you know go inside, and you know it's just going to be more alive. This place is just going to look like it's uh, it actually has some purpose, right? So that's the most important bit. Now this was before the procedural object update that included the sub buildings. So. The, uh, the terminal building actually does have sub-buildings and uh, fortunately for me, if you do convert it, then the first building that actually gets converted or back in the day got converted uh, was the front of the building. So I was able to just manipulate the front and create really interesting shapes in there. I suppose that in the end cinematics this is going to be a bit clearer how it eventually ended up looking but uh, it's really good it uh, it's hardly noticeable that that place is made of like many different uh, instances of that terminal building and even that office building now uh, this is exactly what i said so we just did the rough outline of the ferry ports i just placed the most important buildings and i already got some idea how it needs to continue because when i was going in for this project uh it was not exactly clear to me how it needs to be you know positioned like buildings how are they going to be positioned what kind of buildings I'm even going to position in that area. So I really wanted to just uh, do the rough shape and then continue doing something else, some kind of different blocks around here, because those are also very important for the overall feel of this area. And uh, obviously when that's done, I can then continue doing some details and uh, you know all those other things. So we had some remnants actually from that crater project, like two and a half, three years ago, maybe something like that. It's a very old one. And uh, those kinds of blocks are really needed to fill with some more modern buildings that are going to kind of work together with this uh, ferry port area. So I was using, for example, those very nice looking apartment buildings made by Comrade Intense. I already used them in that uh, remote residential area, but uh, these kinds of buildings are really nice for these kinds of purposes that I did here. So I created these kinds of like stairs or tiered uh, like levels of the residential block, let's say. It's a very similar approach to what I did, for example, in that residential hive project long time ago again. And uh, in here I kind of angled it towards the ferry port and it's overall just creating like a nice edge of the area. And that's exactly the overall feel that I was talking about. So now I had, at this point, I had much better idea how the actual ferry port needs to continue. So I returned to it and started doing some more, like, well, not exactly detailing. I, I suppose that these kinds of retaining walls are not really the detailing part just yet, but uh, the shape, you know, the more detailed shape. Yeah, let's call it that way. So I was using quite heavily the network multi-tool in here to really make uh, make something more interesting with these retaining walls. So I was doing this on the live stream. If you've been there, then you remember that it took me a really long time and many different tries. And I was really trying to find the correct shape, the, the good looking shape in here. I eventually decided that we're just going to break that rectangularness of the area by creating uh, like waves with the retaining wall and with the same radius with the network multi-tool. That's kind of the point. That's, uh, that's the main strength of that mod. And uh, then just create some kind of a place uh, on the side of this uh, train station that's also going to be slightly angled. It's not really going to be parallel to that uh, terminal building. So pretty much none of these retaining walls are going to be parallel to anything outside of the ferry port, which is nice. I mean, I suppose apart from this wall that I'm building right here, that's kind of parallel to, for example, this road. Now, by the way, this place, uh, it's kind of visible in these shots, even though I am, you know, looking straight down with the camera, but uh, the, the ferry port pit is actually much lower than the terrain. So we do need to create some kind of different levels in here. There are going to be some details. Yeah, yeah, with grass in here. I'm doing exactly that. And it's later going to be detailed with some benches, or sorry, not benches, bushes and flowers and all that kind of the usual decoration, right? And also like elevators, which are later going to be functional with invisible pedestrian paths and all those kinds of things. So that this place is going to be nicely walkable and very alive with the pedestrians. Now, the next thing, and this was actually a huge headache when I first did this. Uh, well, obviously making it functional with the ferries. Now, at this point, I didn't really try to make it functional. I was just trying to 
uh, see how exactly the boats might go into this place because I wasn't exactly sure how I even wanted to to make this place look like uh, if I want to have some kind of like wooden paths or wooden piers maybe for the boats. I, at this point, I don't think I was even sure which boats I want to use there. I was kind of using the river cat boat in there, but uh, I eventually did use the functional river cat as well. But uh, I don't think I was... Uh, I was um, all that set on using them at this point. But anyway, I eventually settled for using uh, two piers. So it's going to have two stops. The inner part of the ferry port is going to have two stops. And uh, there are some like props of uh, the of the boats. They are just, uh, you know, chilling there kind of as a decoration and um, defining the shapes and sizes of the piers. So, you know, eventually it's going to look uh, more alive with the moving boats. But uh, they are just parked there as a decoration because this ferry port is also probably going to be some kind of a depot for for the smaller ferries as well, right? Anyway, enough of, enough of that. We are now going to do some more technical details uh, regarding this uh, bridge. So, this is just a regular surface version of this main avenue because I didn't really want to have the, have the version of the bridge in here. I really wanted to have it uh, smoothly transitioned to the rest, of the rest of the road in here. So, I just decided to use the terraforming networks to flatten the terrain. To let the water in, that's what I did in the opening of the cinem uh, of the time lapse here, and uh, then I just used in here the uh, uh, the decorative networks made by CityWalk CityWall. They are very nice looking in this particular place. I just uh, made a couple of copies in there and created some kind of uh, volume on the side of the bridge so that it's not going to look that flat and obviously provide some kind of railing as well. And uh, since the bridge was not exactly all that short, I needed to provide some kind of supports. But uh, there are going to be ferries moving below it, so we can't afford a pillar. And, or, you know, in the mid-span, we can't afford any pillar. So I decided to go for that uh, slightly unusual structure. I just used a pillar on the top, kind of like a pylon. But I didn't want to include a cables on the opposite side. I didn't want to make it symmetrical. So I only used cables on one side and make the and made the uh, the pylon angle so it's going to help with all the forces it's not exactly like a super long bridge either so it's going to be perfectly fine to do it this way and it's also kind of a nice decorative element in that area and uh, you know it's just uh, that's kind of what counts in these kinds of places Anyway, uh, now that I already kind of advanced with uh, the shape of the ferry port, I decided to continue before I jump into the final detailing, I decided to continue filling these uh, blocks of buildings around it because again, that's just going to help me with the overall feeling of the area and then I can decide better how I want to continue the detailing. So, for example, this block. This block was uh, much easier because it was completely empty. It was not a case of me finishing some old project. So I could have just started doing something completely new. And I decided that in here I'm just going to burn through all the, well, not all, but most of the unique buildings that I still have. So I, for example, used that uh, kind of recently released uh, headquarters, police headquarters building because it has a very interesting footprint. Again, you know that I really do like these kinds of footprints that are non 90 degrees because you can really play with them, fit them in some kind of these roads. And it actually did fit between these roads. But I suppose that's not a coincidence because the crater area kind of does play with some 45 and 90 degrees. So, you know, if you have like a 45 degree corner, chances are that these kinds of buildings from the workshop are going to fit because they are usually going to be either 45 or 30 or 60 or something like that. So if you're going to do these kinds of angles, then, uh, you know, there's a very high chance that these uh, non-standard shaped buildings are going to fit there, uh, apart from the 90 degrees, obviously, that are most common. Well, anyway, so that's the police building. Then I also placed uh, the uh, Chinese high school building, I think. That's the L-shaped uh, or kind of a chair shaped uh, red building right on the waterfront. Very nice one. I think I already showed it in the previous episode that I wanted to place it on the waterfront, but this was a much better place for it. And then I also used that Polish uh, uh, swimming pool building, I think it's called. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's kind of hidden inside the block, but it's forming like a nicely looking 
maybe like a technical building inside the block. So overall, I just used very big footprint buildings in this block, filled it you know, reasonably fast and uh, it's looking okay. It's looking absolutely fine. It doesn't really have like super tall buildings, which was kind of the goal of this area because we already have like the skyscraper center of the city. I really didn't want to place it here. And uh, at the same time, it is still very high density because there's basically no gaps inside these blocks. It's all just some kind of buildings with these kinds of uh, gardens on the rooftops or something like that. Uh, one one exemption from that uh, was the uh, was the park area that I was doing there. But it's kind of like a pedestrian connection as well between the different levels and entrances to some buildings. So, you know, that's perfectly fine. And it's obviously all going to be decorated heavily with trees and, you know, benches on the paths and everything. Also, these buildings right there on the side of the ferry terminal, the buildings that I talked about, how I made them into those uh, tiered um, stairs, kind of, a tiered block. I also created grass on the roofs because it only felt fitting and included uh, quite a lot of props there, all these kinds of garden props. So it's going to look uh, very low density as well, in a way, with these kinds of props. But obviously it's just the rooftop of like a super high density block. So that's kind of interesting combination, but uh, it's not exactly original in Aurelia because I have used that kind of technique in the in the residential hive many many years ago actually i can already say that and uh, in different places around the city as well so i'm just following the style you know we are in episode 103 so no point really discovering something something new but it's kind of important to just stay consistent throughout these kinds of projects because we also need to make sure that we are going to blend these projects with uh, what's already built right and we are on the side of the crater which is a really old project so it's only fitting that we are going to make it look uh, similar similar styles similar buildings you know similar approach basically now, this is another block that really needed to be completed. Now, this is a very important block and also a very tricky one to fill because we need to basically make it all completely fake. Uh, we need to fake the surface on top of this block because it uh, has the tram depot below it, the vanilla tram depot. It actually serves, I think, uh, the entire city. This depot is serving all the lines in the city except for that one light rail on the other side of the river because that's not connected to the rest of the network. It has its own uh, kind of like a fake, or well, not fake, but functional depot block somewhere in the city. It's kind of looking weird, but it's, it's working. But uh, it's pretty much the same story with this depot. I only wanted to have this depot, uh, you know, somewhere. I was always pushing the actual depot away from the areas that I started building. And eventually I kind of, you know, decided that we're going to do the edges of the city. So I needed to finalize the position of the depot. So I placed it here, which is on the on the end of the line that we have seen in that right uh, video. But uh, it's like a depot that's supposed to be hidden. It's there. Obviously, Aurelia needs to have a depot, like realistically. But uh, it doesn't really make sense to have it visible. So it's somewhere underground somewhere in the city, you know, if this was like real life, I'm not really thinking that the depot could be here, it could be anywhere else, wherever the tracks are going underground, there could be a depot. But, uh, you know, for functionality wise, in the gameplay, we actually had to have it here, right? But the point is, that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get to already, is that we just need to cover it, we just need to hide it somewhere, because you can't really make it underground, uh, in the game, but you actually have to hide it. So that's why I did all this, uh, all these uh, ploppable grass in here and all these different buildings. And basically right on top of the depot, there is this little opening, this park. And again, it's kind of looking okay because it's the only block in this area that has this kind of green opening, which is, you know, a nice contrast to these areas. And I'm just using the same buildings that I already, uh, already used around the crater, so it's just being consistent with the styles like I mentioned before. So that's kind of nice. Now, moving on to a third block around this place, and this one is actually going to be really cool, really interesting, because this, this little corner, I'm not really sure if it was part of the crater project, 
Probably not, but it has a very interesting little detail and that's this overhanging like a concrete uh, roof or something. It's partially covering that main avenue and it's already uh, kind of 90 degree turning uh, in here and uh, going only a short distance away from the highway. But still, there is that overhang which is created by that concrete looking uh, prop. I forgot uh, its name. It's supposed to be used as like a rock falling protection uh, over some some cliffside roads or something like that it's it's kind of common to, to to see that in real life by the way but anyway in this in this place in particular it was creating uh, some kind of a place which was just screaming for some kind of pedestrian connection right and this place because it has all these different levels and everything it's not exactly all that interconnected with pedestrian paths and certainly not with roads so this is going to be a really important pedestrian connection. It's going to connect uh, this waterfront area, even the ferry port and everything, and it's going to basically connect it uh, on the other side to the uh, the canal valley, if you remember, the canal valley with that big uh, commercial block, right? So that's going to be a very important pedestrian connection. It's going to nicely go uh, below that uh, that uh, partial overhang there and uh, it has a couple of stairs there. It's going to be really like a cozy little detailed corner uh, on the side of this highway, of that uh, project with the concrete walls and everything. So it's kind of an interesting interesting area that just happened in that place so that's that's interesting anyway what is this what am i placing here this uh, pyramid building i do believe that this building is made by quad rioters it's a very interesting looking building because it's not just a pyramid but the pyramid is all only on the top and even that is kind of interesting with the with the windows and everything but uh, on the bottom it's actually going down it's like a reversed pyramid and uh, it has these kinds of entrances there that are looking very big, almost as if this was supposed to be some kind of a, like a sports center or like an arena or something. But I'm thinking of this building as maybe some kind of a like a government building of the city. It's not exactly placed right in the center. It's uh, not exactly having like an interesting plaza in front of it or some kind of. Uh, some kind of uh, open space that would indicate that it's a very important building. But uh, I never really wanted to build like a super fancy huge government square in the in the city. It just didn't really felt right. So this is perfect. This kind of place for us, some kind of government building would be perfect. And what better building than like a really weird looking one, right? At least compared to the rest of the city. So this pyramid felt absolutely perfect for it. And like I said, I'm thinking of it as some kind of a some kind of a government building. Yeah, basically that like a city hall maybe. Think about it that way. So, you know, why not? Why not uh, why not that? Uh, the building just nicely fit in this corner. It also filled pretty much the rest of the area. It's the only building in this corner and uh, we had to detail around it a bit because uh, it's not exactly flat ground so I had to create these kinds of planters on the sides of these roads and then these kinds of stairs which are aligned to those entrances to the building if they are entrances I'm not exactly sure I also played with the building spawn points to actually create the spawn points of this building so that they would be on the roads and I think I turned it in Rico because it was just a unique building I believe I turned it into a commercial building with like thousand jobs or something. So it's going to be really busy. A lot of people are going to go to it and lots of traffic is going to go to it. So that's going to be nice because it's going to just bring that foot traffic into this place, into this general area. And it's also going to put a lot of pedestrians on this connection that I'm building right here. That's the cozy little corner, uh, the pedestrian connection corner that I was talking about. So yeah, the pyramid kind of out of place, very out of style, let's say, but uh, at the same time, it just fits because Aurelia is a bit bit of a weird city anyway, right? So that's nice. And by the way, the pyramid is actually the last big building built in the city. So that's also kind of uh, fitting so that it's going to be this like a unique, weird building. Now also there was that empty space inside of that infinity shaped interchange. I was not really sure what to do with it. I wanted to first put some trees in there, but uh, you know, eh, I didn't really feel like it. So I just flooded it, made it into some sort of a pond with like reeds on the sides and uh, yeah, it eventually turned out looking okay. 
Now, for the most important part, and actually for the most uh, frustrating part, that I'm not really showing in, it, in its full glory in the time lapse, but uh, I was really struggling to make the actual ferry stations working. Now, doing these kinds of pedestrian con connections, that's like child's play at this point for me, because I'm doing it absolutely everywhere. So this was this was not a problem. Connecting the train station, absolutely fine. Did it the first time and it was working. And uh, yeah, even connecting it, as you can see, through that uh, b big block of the uh, of the ferry terminal building to all these different street levels and everything. So even if people don't want to use the public transport, they are just going to use that pedestrian infrastructure to just go through that area because it's also a connector between the different uh, height levels, right? But anyway, uh, these uh, ferry lines. So by the way, I am uh, using these um, these only one way uh, connections. I'm as you can see, I'm connecting it to the island city. It's going to be like a sightseeing route. It's not really going to be used by citizens of the city that much because it's just way too long. It's much more convenient to just use the trains to go to the island city. So not a lot of people are going to be using this. But then I'm also doing this uh, line which is going uh, towards the edge of the map. Now, the first idea there was that I'm just going to provide like an outside connection and people are going to move into the city using the ferries. I'm not really sure if that worked or not, if people are using it or not. I eventually just created like a little fake uh, park life park on the edge of the map there so that there is actually some motivation for people to go there and it worked. So we now have quite a lot of people using the ferries. But uh, by the way, the stations for the ferries, I actually had to use like a little building that I downloaded from the workshop and uh, because it was the only one that I managed to get work in, uh, in that particular place. And I actually had to hide it with some procedural objects. It was a really frustrating thing to do. And it was really difficult to actually include it in the time lapse because I was always just uh, remodeling it, uh, rebuilding it, destroying it. So I just decided to cut it completely off and only show you making, uh, making the lines. Now, the reason why I used the one way uh, ferry path lines is that I wanted to make them go into like separate places in the lake so that when the boats are finally going to be going uh, in the lake and uh, we have like four lines in this area or something then it's going to look like they are filling like a big part of the lake so there's going to be like a big volume of boats all over the place right it's just going to reinforce that uh, that uh, idea that uh, the traffic is just kind of heavy on the lake and it's just very alive with all the ferries, all the boats, right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. For example, this connection to this artificial island, I am making it go completely different places in the different directions. By the way, what is going on in this artificial island? Because I placed that statue there, right? I'm thinking that uh, that's probably the statue of Aurelia. That's kind of some mythical maybe founder of the city or something like that. It's obviously heavily inspired by the Statue of Liberty. It's kind of on its separate island here. It has the ferries going towards it. It has like a very nice, uh, like a fancy grand looking, uh, like a base, concrete base with some kind of retaining walls, so kind of offset from the island uh, slightly. And uh, then the island itself has uh, like a ferry, ferry building obviously so that people can actually go there and uh, a building now that's a procedural object building I'm thinking of it as some kind of a museum maybe like a museum you know that's uh, showing the the founding of the city or something like that showing the myth of founding the city and uh, it has by the way this entire island is a park life park it has an entrance uh, invisible entrance right at the at the ferry station and then it has these like a cube service or block service i never remember those names it's the same technique that i used in altengrad in the uh, in the botanical garden i just placed these kinds of cubes that have uh, some kind of entertainment values i just placed them in that museum buildings and i think here and there i actually hit them into some of these rocks and I'm also going to hide them inside of this monument uh, base, right? So that there's just going to be a lot of people walking all over this place. And this place is actually super busy because it's highly attractive to the people, to the citizens, even tourists. And uh, well, Aurelia doesn't have tourists, so only, only the locals. 
but uh, there's there's a lot of them and you could have already seen that i also played with these kinds of rocks around the island i created that cute little arch uh, with the rock formations with procedural objects of course people are nicely going below it you're going to see that in the cinematics i included a shot of that and uh, then i just uh, continued by kind of fancying up this uh, this base of the statue because it's really uh, like a really fancy statue, right? I also made it like much, much bigger because this statue downloaded from the workshop is kind of like a smaller monument for some kind of a little square, but I made it much, much bigger. It's even taller than some of the tallest buildings on the waterfront. And that's, you know, the facing of the waterfront here. And uh, that's only fitting because it's supposed to be like a really grand looking statue that's just overlooking the entire city. Now, it's, I suppose, a bit unfortunate that this island is shared with the highway, so that's kind of ruining it, but uh, I managed to, with these kinds of detailings, I managed to cut the island in half, basically, with the rocks and mostly trees, so it's looking like it has, like, two separate places, and I think that's eventually uh, looking absolutely fine. Now, this is the final transition. You can kind of appreciate the volume of traffic on the upper lake. It's not like the boats are like super everywhere, but uh, you know, it's looking okay. Especially these kinds of shots from, from above are going to show the traffic, um, you know, a bit more favorably, I suppose. I'm really, I'm really, really glad that I included that pyramid right there. It's not exactly fitting with the highway, as you can see, it's kind of angled really weirdly, but it's definitely fitting with the rest of the, of the infrastructure on uh, this side of the highway, so that's looking good. And uh, like I said before, it's kind of out of place, but kind of fits. It's kind of a weird thing to have it there, but eventually it's looking okay. This is a very nice shot of that ferry very terminal area. As you can see, the boats are actually working there. They are using both of those uh, piers. The bridge is looking really good with that, uh, with that structure on top of it. We have the highway here with some traffic and the pond below it. It's all just nicely blended together. It's uh, eventually looking very compact in the area. I like it. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. I didn't include it in the time lapse. I think I built like a tiny little um, what is that called? Lighthouse on the side of the entrance to that uh, to that closed off the inner part of the ferry terminal. And look at how many people are walking all over the place. I included many different points of entry to not just the entire floor of the ferry pier of the ferry piers, but also the train station itself. We have the elevator in here. People can obviously enter from the terminal buildings and all these different other places. And there's actually even an underground connection from the from the level of the piers all the way to the crater that you can see in this shot on the right there, right? So there's so many possibilities how people can cross these places. And uh, yeah, it just all led to the volume of people that we can, we can have there. And it's just looking very, very good. That was that little corner that I was talking about. It's also kind of busy with pedestrians, even though it took them a while before they realized that uh, that's a possibility. But uh, yeah, we are... We are having some really nice volume there. And finally, the statue. This kind of shot is very, very satisfying. It shows you the grandness of the statue, kind of looking up over the city, facing the city. And behind the statue, we have the entire island, the museum building, and the ferries that are nicely going towards the island, unloading all the tourists, all the people from the city that want to learn something more about the history of Aurelia. And of course, at the back of the island, we have that highway, which is nicely kind of covered in uh, in like a big forest, actually. And speaking of forests and trees, I actually also remodeled some parts of the map. I, I included lots of uh, different trees. I was actually keeping, uh, keeping an eye on, on the limits of trees, because in Aurelia, I'm not using unlimited trees mod and actually did reach the quarter million. So we're done with trees, even if I, uh, you know, even if I wasn't finished, then uh, we are finished anyway. But that doesn't really matter. I just included a couple of trees here and there on the map to make it a bit more nicer. And look at this. I also included a nice night shot with some of these uh, lights shining on the statue. This one is really satisfying to 
look at not gonna lie. Anyway, guys, that is all. That is the last episode from Aurelia. Well, last building episode. I'm still going to return with some cinematics, some kind of overview. I also promised to do some kind of a public transport overview. That's going to be the next episode, 104. And um, I'm not really sure what else, but there's definitely going to be that uh, that um, super episode where I'm just going to mix everything together and going to show you the progress we did. And uh, yeah, the overall cinematics, I already mentioned that, and maybe some something more. Maybe something more that I'm going to figure out later. Anyway, that is going to be all. Thank you for uh, being here for the last building episode of Aurelia. I hope you liked it. If you did, then you can do the usual to help the video, help the channel. So putting a thumbs up below the video, leaving a comment, sharing the video, subscribing if you're new here, and you can also become a channel member to directly support what I do here. Big thanks to all the channel members that we have right now. Thank you guys again for watching. Stay tuned for more and goodbye.